Hey everybody! So, I was at Final Fantasy XIV Fan Fest this year. But, before we talk about the good stuff, I'd like to talk at length about my time from the beginning. So, to help you find whatever it is you're looking for, whether it's clips of the concert, panels, comparisons between 2014 and 2016, I made this handy dandy timestamp chart, which you can refer to here. Or here. I hope it's over here. <laughs> I wanted this to be a somewhat com comprehensive kind of like guide to compare my experience between FanFest 2014 and FanFest 2016 because they were totally different. So, before tickets went on sale, I did my best, believe me, I did my best, to convince as many raid members to go since I had such a good time at FanFest 2014. In fact, you can actually read my feelings about the event over here, or here, or up there, or down, somewhere, it's somewhere. Out of everyone, we had a total of six people. At least three of them weren't actually in the raid group due to various reasons by the time FanFest came about. That happens, real life and all that jazz, it's a game, what you gonna do? So we had Addy, Stella, Woof, Elk, myself, and a friend of mine who was kinda along for this wild ride. <laughs> we had an extra ticket because the system they used was a little bit weird, and both Addy and I were worried one of us wouldn't get in, so she ended up buying an extra one because of me. Luckily, the new ticketing system, I feel is an improvement over Eventbrite. While I personally didn't have an issue with Eventbrite uh, for the normal ticket or the VIP pass in 2014, other people did, and they decided to go with the same system PAX uses for 2016. Either way, the lack of VIP is an issue, and I'll get into that a little later. Um, it was a ticket add-on you could get that gave you benefits in 2014, but once again, I'll get into that later. Backing up one more time, my co-healer that couldn't come, Armonti, asked me to Snapchat everything. I don't know a thing about it, and I couldn't get it to work, so instead you'll see these really dumb videos I recorded on my phone. Like this. It's too early. Eh, my door sucks. I might have gone to sleep at like 3 in the morning, so, <laughs> or 4, I don't know. You wanted video updates, you're gonna get fucking video updates on the most mundane shit. <laughs> this is why I don't have a Snapchat, it would be a horrible idea. <laughs> Alright, get another video later. I did my best to make them as meaningless as possible because that's what Snapchat is for, right? Right? Ah, how much data did I make him waste this weekend? The world may never know. I'm a good friend. <laughs> On bad pickup, Woof and Addy had already arrived in their hotel, and I was up around 6.30 a.m. to get in line to avoid the issues from the last event. Since I was a VIP in 2014, I didn't have any issues getting my badge. In fact, I walked in at like 8 p.m. and then jumped in line for autographs. But the non-VIP line was like five or six hour wait in 2014, which is nuts. Um, this year we had no reason to even get up early as the line was cleared in less than 30 minutes. And then people just walked up and grabbed their badge. <laughs> totally didn't expect that. Good on you, Square Enix. Though, whoever got the room singing forward and back and then forward and back when we were going through the zigzag, you got that song stuck in my head for three days. Thanks for that. Like, seriously. I'd appreciate that a lot. Thank you. It still isn't stuck in my head. Um, the badges weren't personalized, so they weren't being printed out this year. They didn't include player name, uh, real name, or server, which we knew about due to the community manager saying as such on his personal Twitter and the forums when tickets were up on sale. So that was a thing way long ago. While this may pick up super fast, um, I was hopeful I could at least put like a pin somewhere with my server. But those weren't provided and I didn't have the foresight to get them made for my group. Whoops. 
The grab bag, while nice, left something to be desired. It didn't include a shirt, which has been a pretty prominent complaint across the interwebs and at the event. It also didn't include a quest booklet. You had to grab these yourself from the Redemption Area Idleshire inside of the event. I consider this a minor inconvenience, if anything, but if you have them, why not put them in every bag? What? <laughs> However, the sticker set I prefer over the previous event's tattoos. The stress ball is a funny, cute nod to the game, but the tombstone 16GB USB stick is very much the best design item in my opinion. Obviously in love with the end game items as well because Final Fantasy X is my favorite. Haters gonna hate. Stay away from the summoner! Lackluster for me, though, was the coupon code for Gunner Glasses, which I didn't know of, and upon further research, I don't really care about. As well as the magnet of the mascot from Gold Saucer. It's cute and all, but it's a magnet. Ooh. The schedule book also felt like a lower quality, as did the quest booklet. Um, these are very minor nitpicks, but things I feel deserve to be brought up to assess a fair comparison. On Friday, the gang and I were fairly adamant on getting into line as soon as possible to get merchandise out of the way. We were in line around 4 a.m.? Maybe later? It's, it's kind of a blur, to be honest. Hey, Monty, we're in line. And if you can't guess what I'm dressed as, well, you suck. Are you excited? Hi, 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 hi. Doors didn't open until 10 a.m. And the frustrating thing when doors were open is they didn't just let like the front of the line in, but also all of the other doors. So people were not entering an order. And that was really frustrating to someone who was there at 4 a.m. <laughs> Regardless, we were near the front of the merch line, but we're, we were dismayed to find out that merch would not open until 12.15 after the keynote announcing the expansion. This is going to be my biggest complaint, so hold tight, just get comfy, will your butt in your chair, get comfy. During 2014, they allowed us to get into merch and started right off the bat, so people could fill up seats much quicker. Instead, what they forced us to do was decide between getting merch that was bound to sell out, or get a good seat for the keynote. Initially, the announcer kept encouraging people over and over, hey, sit down, fill out those seats, da 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 da, but most people didn't want to move. <laughs> like, why would they move from the merch line? Because within 10 minutes of the doors opening, the line was already 5 to 7 hours long. It wrapped around most of the building. It was ridiculous. From a personal perspective, I felt that I was being punished for trying to give Square Enix more of my money. I couldn't actually really even see the keynote from my spot because the merch booth had these displays and I'm not a tall person so I couldn't see over them. I could really only hear the keynote which was so disappointing. It, it sucked. <laughs> it was pretty much a good reason why I paid so much to go a second time. If the line had been moving my group would have had at least been able to sit down or stand in the back to see and we just couldn't and that, that sucks. <laughs> However, I will congratulate them for including more than two registers. I believe they had ten or so in total and six to seven people who were just grabbing merch. Their system for picking up merch was also a lot better. They give you like this little tag with a number on it and they call out the number. I just wish they had like a, like a, what are those things? You know what I'm talking about. While it has been said before, they could allow people to order items beforehand and then go pick them up. From a logistics point of view, I can see how this is very dangerous for the business. For example, the lore book was printed in October, so a week or two before the event tops. If they're missing any number, they have to then deal with refunds, um, you know, people not picking up their items, all of that stuff. Any solution causes more problems, and it's a very difficult situation to deal with, with no clear answer. So, uh, you know, keep trying, Square Enix. Just keep trying. But my one request is if you're going to open the doors an hour before you open any events, open at least the merch line. 
like you did in 2014. If you want to close it for the keynote, that's fine. Just open it. That will get more people into seats and out of lines, period. So to balance out the negativity of the merchandise booth, let me show you a sneak peek of some of the good. to the keynote itself, the cinematic, while beautiful, felt like the only actual announcement. 
All right, all right. <laughs> Hold up before I get flamed here. They announced an expansion, which we knew was coming, as Yoshida has gone on record saying they would only do FanFest if they were going to announce something. He's said that several times. So we knew the release would be also be uh, near the same as time frame as like Heaven's Word, right? So early summer 2017 was not a shocking reveal. Hell, where we were going in said expansion wasn't even a surprise. So where are we gonna go next? <laughs> When you have the crowd tell you where you're going in the expansion, that's not a good thing! That's not a good thing! That's not shocking! The only thing we sort of got was the t-shirt hint, which I do think is a smart tradition to keep up. Um, the Scarlet Witch shirt implies a red mage at the very least, which is kind of exciting. Going up 10 levels was also pretty predictable, and along with new jobs, they had to expand the inventory to enable players to play without suffering a painful death. <laughs> the idea of them revamping some of the battle system was a much needed change. Console and PC players alike are already facing button bloat. And it's bad. I am concerned this will perhaps make the game a little bit easier, which I would like to avoid, but my hope is that most changes are actually for DPS. Personally, I feel that classes like White Mage are in a very good place right now. Granted, I'm biased, I'm a White Mage main. In all fairness, the keynote from 2014 didn't have too many more announcements, but it was a surprise no one was expecting. We also had quite a lot of announcements um, concerning the next patch um, to be released, like two weeks later. Uh, while well, I get to the live letter a little bit later in this video, um, I believe this was a poor choice not having anything to announce at the live letter, and actually helped compound the problem of the reveals feeling lackluster. I don't know what happened to the schedule or timing, I'm sure that's all stuff I won't find out, but that was an issue. <laughs> the first panel of the day was the development panel, which included Masaki Nakagawa from the Battle Creation team. Oh gosh, the poor guy was so nervous, but the community quickly dubbed him Mr. Ozma. I hope sincerely that America's more brash nature did not deter him and he felt welcome. If we as a community have failed, then I am deeply sorry. So, Mr. Ozma here is very nervous right now, so just encourage him a little bit, please. It did feel out, however, that Yoshida was taking good care of him. He was constantly patting him on his shoulder or opening his bottle of water, so hopefully that kind of comforted him. I love the informative nature of this panel and believe it to be a very attractive addition to the programming. I'm going to include some footage from the panel. We'll be bouncing around a bit, but please enjoy. Hi, I'm Masaki Nakawa. Please call me Masaki. I started to work for Square Enix in December 2011, right after the first final one, if Rito was implementing the Intune's original version 14. Before joining Square Enix, I worked as a programmer for an e-commerce system company, and I was like you, a Final Fantasy fan. and creating sanction system 
and fashion names for my phone prices and so forth. For level one development, I was assigned to the monster team after a few months of working for the iPhone team. Thank you for listening. Let's move on to the topic of the battle content I have helped create. And let me speak Japanese from now on, as many Japanese players are watching this. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. You did a really good job. You did it in English. This is the list of a battle content I've worked on. How close have you come to for it? In just three years? All of this? This is pretty impressive. For you guys, the instance dungeon of the same and the quest battle that I've worked on is that the number of the game is not here. In addition to these, I've worked on quest battles and other instance dungeon boss battles. Um, that are too numerous to list here. So the diagram you see here describes the flow we use to create uh, most battle content. To put it simply, we start with an idea, document the details, and then conduct presentations with staff of several various sections to receive a consensus. After that, orders are made for character models, motions, uh, effects, sound, battlefields, and with those assets, the battle is put together. Each battle designer has his or her own way of creating new content, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how I personally go about it. When I begin work on a new battle, I start with what I believe is the most fundamental of things, the battle lore and the battle concept. So here's a look at the lore and the concept that I came up with for the Osmo battle. On the lore side, I originally imagined Osmo as being an object of unknown origin. Is it a machine? Is it alive? I wanted it to be filled with mystery. The battle concept was to create a new type of Osmo to change the state of the battle and to create a new type of Osmo to change the state of the battle. For the basic concept, I envision Osmo as being a spheroid which could alter its shape in dramatic fashion. Basically, this rule states that if you can't explain the aforementioned lore and battle concept in 60 seconds or less and make it interesting, then it's back to the drawing board. This rule that you have set up here, this is something that you set for yourself, right? Yes. So say for example, we're coming up with the idea of Ozma. So if you were not able to explain it to me in 60 seconds or less, were you ready to scrap the idea? Yeah, ready to throw it away. If 
そのコンセプトが複雑なので、えー、面白いコンテンツを作れない場合が多いので、えー、このルールに従って企画を作っていますいつも、ね、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいたら、ここで聞いてくれてる人がいリヴァイアスの戦ではバトルフィールドを傾けるというダイナミックな遊びを導入しました。For the Leviathan battle, it was I who came up with the concept of the tilting battlefield. For a y o u r e a t o t h e r a n s t o s a u So this is a pretty impressive sort of effect that we were able to achieve here. But yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about what went behind the scenes. あの当時中川がリヴァイアさんのバトルの企画を船の上で戦ってリヴァイアさんが出現して船に体を叩きつけると船が傾くバトルフィールドが傾くって書いてある。So, when Nakagawa first proposed the idea of the Leviathan battle, and he was talking about how、uh, we're fighting on the ship, and then Leviathan appears and it strikes the ship and it tilts the boat, that just struck me. 確かにさっきの六十秒ルールで言ってもそれは面白いね。And so going by that sixty second rule, oh yeah, it, I thought it was really interesting. その後でもプログラマーとかデザイナーとえどうやどうやって傾けるのってこうみんなコンフューズする。So but I mean the concept was great, but when we took it to the programmers and the designer, they're like, okay, so how do we achieve this? And I'm a little bit confused about this. で実際これ、まあ今日のこのセッションを見た後、リヴァイアさん行ってみてもらいたいんですけど、実は船は一切傾いてません、バトル中。So, um, I would love for people to actually take a look at the Leviathan battle and take notice, but、uh, if you look at it closely, you see that the ship itself is not actually moving. 傾いてるのは海と空です。What is actually tilted is the sea and the sky that's behind it. <laughs> so you're actually just given an optical illusion, so to speak. Yeah, when we first. Took this to the programmers, and no one knew what to do. And so I talked with a lot of people in a lot of the different departments, and this was the best idea that we came up with. So when you look at the Leviathan battle, and then it strikes the ship, and you're、um, tilted, well, the sky and the sea is tilted, and you're pulled in a direction. でも実際にはあの僕らは知ってるんだけど床は動いてないので見えない紐でねこうみんな引っ張られてる。So I mean to give out the secret,、um, the floor hasn't moved, so it's actually like sort of an invisible thread that's kind of pulling you in the direction of where it's tilted. あと最新だと女神の天秤も本当によく思いついた。And oh, I wanted to also bring up in the latest、um, patch、um, the goddess battle.、Um, you, that idea of the scales were really cool too. It's a little bit of 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 a little bit Um, was actually the, the magic copying that's done by the Ion Tethers. But the Maho copy is the idea that I was most of the time, and the fact that the 60 year old rule was in the same way. But to have only the magic copying, when I tried to explain that in 60 seconds, it was actually pretty difficult to do. なので、メインのコンセプトにはできなくて、なので、代わりになるのをずっと考えていたんですが、1ヶ月ぐらいずっとアイデアが出ず、悩みました。
So I knew that because the magic copying was too uh, difficult to explain in 60 seconds, I needed to come up with a, another main unique concept. And so I spent about a month trying to come up with something. And then one day I was at the gym on a running machine on a treadmill and I had this idea of, of the scales and I stopped right there, ran back to work and started working on implementing <laughs> そう、ラッキングマシンだの動くやつだよね。そうです。え、お、チェンジをそれ、イッツイッツムービングライト。いや。そこから落ちてき、調べたわけじゃないんだよね。落ちたわけです。スライドオフ。イッツだけ、今回
And when we showed this uh, to the producer, he said it was a little bit too close to what we had in Void Art, and so we had to go back and tweak it. Well, I've been thinking about it, but at that time, the staff and the level design team, the environment team, had a mock-up so they could check it out and say it to me. And I actually saw it to see it. So I remember the time yeah, when we were working on this, and the art staff and then the level designer environment teams had um, brought up a, a mock-up that they wanted me to check. So it was a dark, dark pyramid of the pyramid of the pyramid, so I decided to stop this one. And so when, when, I looked, when I looked at it, it was such a claustrophobic, dark pyramid, and it, so I didn't want that design. And so when I told the team, I said, all the walls are gone. So what I told the team was, let's just, let's just take away the walls on that outside. So the staff was like, eh? And the staff was like, eh? <laughs> and the look on their faces of like bewilderment was extremely uh, memorable in my mind. And so um, after that concept was delivered, they put it up into uh, an actual mock up artwork, and, and there you have it. And this is an early map of Osmos and Terry. So it's, it's a lot more complex than what we actually ended up implementing in the game. So the original plan was to have the Alliance split up into six groups of four players each. Uh, with each starting point would have one tank, two DPS, and one healer. The problem with this was that at the time of the black hole, if the healer of any of the parties was KO'd, then their mini party would be at a severe disadvantage. And so for that reason, the idea was scrapped. Not good hope. Also not bad. まあ、パチ 3.3 実装直後に世界中でオスマの難易度は適切なのかって言ってすごいプレイヤーの皆さんディスカッションしたのでこうしなくてよかったと思うよかったと思います<笑> With the Osmo Battle though, when patch 3.3 was first、um, launched I know there was a lot of discussion and debate about is this really an appropriate difficult le difficulty level so I think it's good that we ended up、um, not, not utilizing this method <笑> Now, if we were to make maybe an Osmo Battle and Savage version of it, maybe we might go back to the Osmo Battle. I don't know, 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 I don't know. But, I mean, somebody told me this at PAX, I think, but really, do you guys really want a Savage mode? Alright, I think that's a, it's a good spot to maybe you know, go off track a little bit and show you something that we created especially for this session. So when I told the designers about the presentation that I would be giving today here at FanFest,、um, they took the time to whip together a new shapeshift and actually make this video for it. And so if we're really going to make a savage version, this has got to go in. Everybody was just getting wiped out 
and that footage. <laughs> もしって言うから、まあ、どっかのタイミングで考えてもいいけど、あのー、マッハ全体を例式にするわけじゃないよね。それはないです。I mean, I, I guess if the demand is so high from our, our users, we might have to consider it maybe somewhere down the line. But I mean, we're not enveloping the entire city of Mon, right? No, just us. 多分絶対クリアできなくなると思うので。If it was the whole city, no one would be able to clear it. じゃあ。じゃあやるとしたら、オズマサウエンジっていう専用の24人バトルはい。So if we were to consider it, it would be an Ozma specific 24 person battle. That's right. それでもいい。Is, is, that, is that cool with you guys? そのままに、一個だけ。Oh, but one caveat though. 難しくても、難しすぎるんだよ、この野郎って、文句は言わないでください。<笑> if this were to come true, and the difficulty level, It's going to be pretty hard, so I don't want you guys to be complaining. Oh, it's too hard. <laughs> This special rule that we came up with was、um, that it calls for different player placement in the event that a party's healers, one party's healers, were KO'd at the time of the world. これは良かれと思って入れた仕様だったんですが、公開後にどうもバグだと勘違いされてしまったようで、GM 報告で何件か上がってきてしまいました。I mean, this was done、uh, to help out parties that maybe had a healer、uh, KO'd at the time of the war, and we did this because we wanted to make the battle easier for players.、Um, but because it was so unique to this battle,、uh, when we implemented the game, first few days we just kept getting GM calls. Saying that, oh yeah, my player has been warped to the wrong spot, what's going on? <laughs> Those things we, we feel that we're doing the players a favor sometimes comes around as like a bug report. So. Here is an actual list of some of the changes and adjustments that were made to the Ozma battle before it was made. There were far too many to list here. While there are a lot of tweets, I'd like you to know that each of these tweets were made for a specific reason.、Um, let me take a few moments to touch upon some of、uh, some specific tweets. えー、加速度爆弾の効果範囲についてですが、えー、当初は円範囲になっていて、えー、他人を巻き込むようになっていました。So originally the acceleration bomb was supposed to be an AOE attack that affected multiple party members。これは難易度が高すぎたので、えー、すぐに単体に変更しました。Yeah, the, during the test play we found that this was a little bit too difficult for most of the players, so we switched it to a single target。特にあの加速度爆弾が円範囲だった頃は。例えば、あゆみさんに加速度爆弾がついてるんだけど、あゆみさんが気づいてなくて、それに。で、僕が、いや、来るな、来るなって言って落ちたりとか。<笑> and so, when we originally had this where it's AOE, and so, say, for example, I may have the acceleration bomb tag, and Yoshida would be like, no, don't come near me, don't come near me, because it's AOE, and then they would fall. <laughs> Yeah, that was totally, totally savage. Extreme was created when it was in the end. Yeah, that was totally, totally savage. But if we're going to make it savage, we're definitely going to change it to AOE. Today, using Ozma as an example, I'll show you how battle content is put into the game.
please send us your resume. <laughs> we don't care whether you have experience in gaming industry or not. Thank you for your time today. Mr. Ozma likes his falling off ledges, it was a nice panel and a good starting place. I'm hopeful that perhaps he will put in more mechanics that are somewhat similar to Syrian Wind, as I find that these are very unique and somewhat challenging. We'll see? Maybe? Yes? No? Yes? No? Yes? I'll be ending this part here with one last clip from the concert. In the next part I'll address some of the activities as well as the lore panel and a little bit more of the concert and then there'll probably be a third part and I'll end it there and I'll probably do an unboxing of the stuff I got and da 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 Please look forward to it! This has been a really long video, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we are the Primal from Do I get to sing this next song? 